And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Iraq is on the brink of disintegration. Sunni Islamist rebels have seized control of Mosul, Iraq's second largest city, as well as Tikrit, uh, Saddam Hussein's hometown, and Dulawiya, which is just 55 miles northwest of the capital of Baghdad. The rebels are now advancing toward Baghdad. Meanwhile, Iraqi Kurds have seized control of the northern oil city of Kirkuk. The Sunni militants are led by a group called ISIS, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. They now control a territory that stretches from the eastern edge of Aleppo, Syria, to Fallujah in western Iraq, and now the northern city of Mosul. The uh, sudden advance by the Islamist rebels has shocked the region. Earlier today, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said the territorial integrity of Iraq is now in question. The rebel advance has also caused a humanitarian catastrophe. 500,000 people have already been displaced in Mosul. Save the Children said, quote, we're witnessing one of the largest and swiftest mass movements of people in the world in recent memory. The majority of Iraqis fleeing Mosul had to escape in a matter of minutes, they said. One of the refugees spoke after fleeing her home in Mosul. We were sitting in the house, but we heard clashes and sounds of explosions. We didn't know what happened. We can't understand what has happened. What do they want? I don't know. Why do the people suffer now? The people and children were in trouble. We left our houses behind and were so concerned about our sons. I pray to God to let me die to get rest. Also fell in part because U.S.-trained Iraqi forces abandoned their posts. This allowed the Islamist rebels to, to take the city, seize the, its, uh, uh, the city's main uh, army center, release thousands of prisoners from jails, and seize hundreds of millions of dollars from the city's banks. The militants also seized the Turkish consulate, kidnapping 25 staff members, including the diplomatic head of the mission. Wednesday was a deadly day in Baghdad as well. Suicide attacks and car bombs hit Shiite areas, killing at least 37 people. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki called on parliament to declare a state of emergency, but not enough lawmakers showed up today to reach quorum. Al-Maliki also reportedly urged the U.S. to carry out airstrikes, but the Obama administration has declined the request so far. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee met to question President Obama. Obama's nominee for the next ambassador to Iraq Wednesday. But the senators did not ask the nominee or the current ambassador to Iraq a single direct question about the current crisis. To talk more about Iraq, we're joined by two guests. Mohammed al Dulaimi is with us. He's an Iraqi journalist who reports for McClatchy newspapers. He reported from Iraq for years and is now seeking asylum in the United States out of fear for his safety if he returns. This is his first TV interview. He's joining us from Columbia, South Carolina. And here in New York, Ned Parker's with us. He's the Reuters bureau chief in Baghdad, heading back to Iraq shortly. Let's go first to South Carolina, to Mohammed al Dulaimi. Would you please explain what you see is happening to your country right now? What I see is the um, failing of the whole system that the United States and its allies that try to build in Iraq. The whole um, democracy experiment in Iraq is in danger, is actually has been for a long time in danger, but now it's more obvious to everyone. We are seeing now the consequences of a leadership of a sectarian regime that was um, uh, ruling in Iraq for the past eight years, uh, led by Mr. Nur al-Malki and um, the lack of trust among his partners, um, corruption, um, all of that gave the way for radicals to rise and get the um, uh, chance to occupy uh, a two million uh, city, uh, population city in, in Mosul, the second largest Iraqi city. Uh, all of this is threatening the integrity of Iraq, uh, the unity of the country, and threatening Iraq to descend to a more like Syrian-like civil war.
And when you talk about the, uh, the, the, the reign of al-Maliki and the sectarianism of his government, could you elaborate on that? Because clearly, uh, al-Maliki, as a, as a Shiite leader and the majority of the population of Iraq being Shiite, uh, the United States has continued to back uh, his rule there, despite uh, his clampdown on any kind of dissent. Yes, um, we have enough evidence, actually videos, uh, speeches of Mr. Maliki himself, um, showing that this man is leading the country towards a, a civil war. Um, his, his previous press conferences accusing his partners of, of terrorism, um, sometimes uh, forging cases against them, as they say. Um, led the country to high tension, causing Sunnis to go um, into streets um, to protest and uh, to show their demands. Mr. Maliki refused most of these demands. Um, and to the limit, he accused them of uh, continuing some historical uh, event that took place 1,400 years ago. Uh, about 1,400 years ago, and he said that the killers of Imam Hussein are still living among—he um, meant Sunnis, among the other party, which he meant Sunnis. Mr. Maliki has failed to build uh, an Iraqi military that will respect human rights. I just want to say that fanatics, um, uh, Islamists, feed on such human rights breaches. It helps them to further their cause and to win more recruits. This is what has ha happening in Iraq. And you can see the videos of how the Iraqi army dealt with demonstrators in Hawija, how they killed men carrying sticks, uh, only uh, iron sticks, or sometimes carrying nothing. Um, uh, we could, you, you could see the video, the brutality of the military. Mr. Maliki punished no one. Mr. Maliki always refuses to address these issues, to de-escalate the uh, sectarian tensions in Iraq. Mr. Maliki always also refused um, to disarm um, some Iranian-backed, trained Shia militias, like al-Asaib. Uh, these kinds of actions cause the Sunni community to live in a turmoil. And here I think that the United States, uh, the administration, we, all of us, should speak loudly to stop the descent of the country into that civil war, to stop pushing ordinary people towards uh, fanatics to join their lines just to defend themselves against an army that is willing to kill them all. Mohammed al Dulaimi, can you talk about the U.S. weapons that are being used right now? Major deliveries of weapons will be happening this summer as well to the Iraqi government, but whose hands they are falling into, and also these groups' relationships with al Qaeda? Well, the weapons um, we saw um, in the previous few days um, the use of American made weapons like Hellfire missiles, which can be used uh, with great accuracy. Um, the Iraqi military used it to target Fallujah Hospital, Fallujah uh, Teaching Hospital. That hospital that the United States helped building uh, in Fallujah, it is the same hospital that witnessed uh, the increasing numbers of birth defects that is attributed to the use of different kinds of weapons, chemical uh, and all different kinds of weapons that allegedly was used by the United States troops over there. These weapons are now falling into the hands of ISIS. And we saw images uh, uh, of these weapons being transported across the border to Syria. The United States has always uh, worried that uh, sending weapons to the Syrian um, more liberal opposition might fall into the hands of Islamists. Well, now, they are falling into the hands of, of Islamists. And our lack of understanding for these uh, movements of, of terrorist organizations, how they are convincing all of these recruits, are helping them 
continuing their uh, presence, they are not outsmarting uh, the people. They are not uh, that hard to defeat. It's just, it looks like there is no enough will to spend some time and pause and say there must be something wrong of our understanding, that they are keep doing what they are doing. Um, I strongly want to say and emphasize that ISIS is not alone in this fight. Since the order that Mr. Maliki gave on um, 30 of December 2013 to end demonstrations in Al Ambar province, western of Iraq, the Sunni community uh, rushed to arms. Uh, you could see hundreds of men rallying to the street carrying arms. They didn't kill soldiers, they released soldiers back home. They told them to go back home, and uh, they just they were just angry people, uh, fed up with their government uh, that is not listening to them. Uh, ISIS Muhammad, used uh, that anger. Go ahead, ISIS. ISIS used that anger, built on it. And ISIS is more organized than these uh, tribal fighters. Uh, so they are capable of showing their uh, uh, presence. They are capable of um, showing themselves to be the peers of this movement. And uh, it looks like Iraq is heading to more uh, Syrian-like situation. Uh, we're going to break, come back. We'll also be joined by Ned Parker, who's the Baghdad Bureau Chief of Reuters. But, um, Mohammed al Dulaini, why are you doing this interview today, your first broadcast interview? Why are you taking this risk, and why is it a risk? Um, I am taking this risk for the first time. I'm, I'm showing my, my face on TV just because I'm thinking that the, my country um, Iraq has lost so many people, that the United States uh, have lost so many soldiers uh, in that operation. And it's about time to spend some time to understand what's going on the ground. I think if the United States um, intervened now and um, convinced Iraqi politicians to come together and form a new government where people can look up to it will stop Iraq from descending to a civil war, and it will make the United States uh, avoid the possibility of sending troops to Iraq and maybe repeat uh, a scenario that all of us wa don't want to see. I know I might endanger the lives of, of my beloved one. I know I, I am endangering my own life. But it's about time for us, all of us, to raise our voices an attempt to stop all of this. The country is disintegrating, and if the United States and its people, all of us, should stop giving a blind eye to Iraq. Iraq is so wealthy that if it felt into the wrong hands, this is this will not be danger to only Iraq, but to the whole international community. Mohammed al Dulaimi is with us, speaking for the first time on a TV broadcast, speaking to us from Columbia, South Carolina. He's applying for political asylum in the United States, which he has resisted for many years. He's a McClatchy reporter. And when we come back, he'll also be joined by Ned Parker of Reuters, who's headed back to Iraq shortly. Stay with us.